Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us. On behalf of the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, the Administration on Aging, and the Indian Health Service, I'd like to welcome everybody to the monthly Long-Term Services and Supports webinar. My name is Katie Pennington, and I'll be facilitating today's webinar. You should all see the first slide of the PowerPoint presentation, as well as the Q&A box open on your screen. There's also a row of icons at the bottom of your screen. The webinar screen you see in your browser belongs to you. So that means you can customize it by opening and closing the icons and windows, moving the windows around, or resizing them if you'd like. Uh, we will have a question and answer session at the end of the presentation and um, probably some opportunities for questions um, during different parts of the presentation. So if you have questions, you can go ahead and type them into the Q&A box at any time, and then we will save those questions um, for the Q&A session to ask the presenters to address them at that time. If you need technical assistance during the webinar, go ahead and enter your tech support question into the Q&A box. We'll work to answer your question right away, and you'll receive an answer in that Q&A box. Today's webinar is titled, Caring for the Caregivers using reach into Indian country to support people caring for patients with dementia and Alzheimer's. So it is my pleasure to introduce our moderator, Bruce Fink, who is the elder health consultant for the Nashville Area Indian Health Service and acting chief medical officer for the Nashville area. I'd also like to introduce our presenters today. We have uh, Tina Ta, senior nurse consultant, uh, for Public Health Nursing IHS Headquarters. We have Jennifer Martindale-Adams, co-director for the Caregiver Center, Barbara Higgins, REACH trainer coach, and Norma Benali, community health nurse in the IHS New Mexico area. And I will go ahead and turn it over to Bruce Fink now. Thank you, Katie. Um, Katie, are you hearing me okay? I sure am. It's great to be with you all, and it's especially great to be with this terrific panel of folks to talk about REACH, REACH into Indian Country. And I'll, I'll start um, by, by just saying a few words about REACH into Indian Country and why, um, from the IHS perspective, and, um, and I know from the uh, Administration on Aging, ACL uh, perspective as well, we're so excited about this, um, this opportunity. So REACH uh, stands for Resources to Enhance Alzheimer's Caregivers' Health, um, which is an, it's a structured, evidence-based intervention that supports the caregivers of people with dementia. It's a model that we first learned about several years ago um, that has been, and we'll hear more about the specifics of the model later in the morning, later in the uh, in in the hour. But it's a model that has been um, adapt adapted. Uh, for the VA and is a in which we've had the opportunity to pilot and test in several uh, tribal communities, both from tribal uh, through tribal programs and through IHS programs, and with very positive results. Now, uh, with an agreement in place between the Indian Health Service and the Reach Training Center in Memphis, Tennessee, um, we're able uh, to uh, provide this training and certification and support uh, for uh, programs across Indian country, IHS, tribal, and also uh, Title VI funded Native American caregiver support programs um, to train and certify care, uh, caregiver interventionists, folks who will, who will be able to go, uh, go out to the home um, and support caregivers of people with dementia. Um, Within the IHS, we're particularly interested in uh, bringing this resource to our to public health nurses and also potentially to CHRs, um, mostly because what we've learned, and we'll hear more about this in just a moment, is that this really supports the work that public health nurses are doing already, support of, of people with dementia and the families and caregivers who are caring for them. But enough background. Now, um, Mostly excited to hear from someone who's actually doing this work, from Norma Benali at Northern Navajo Medical Center, or Shiprock, uh, and uh, to hear a little bit from Norma about uh, their experience with the REACH intervention. 
So I will say that we're going to, this is going to be a very informal uh, conversation here. And I'm going to be talking with Norma, and then later in the hour, we'll also be talking with the other panelists, Tima Ta, uh, Jennifer uh, Martindale Adams, and Barbara Higgins. And they may also be asking questions of each other. And we'll look, we'll look for you all uh, who are participating in the webinar to ask questions as well. So just think of this as if um, we're all in a big room and you know, there's a table and we have a set of panelists, and the first panelist is, is Norma. And Norma, could you tell us a little bit about your experience at Shiprock um, with using the REACH intervention? Hello, everyone. My name is Norma Benelli. I'm a public health nurse with uh, Northern Navajo. And our uh, journey began back in uh, July of 2013. I believe there was a, another individual or another public health nurse by the name of Diane Bonebreak. She attended a training by, um, I believe it was Dr. Fink, and it was with the InLink. Um, and so that started our journey back in July of 2013. Since then, we've had um, a a few of our nurses were trained back in November of 2013, and a couple of people were certified, myself and Diane. And um, in 2014, uh, Diane was able to um, uh, get a number of um, uh, VA clients through our RPMS system. And we started looking at some of those clients, and, and she gave some of those people or gave out as referrals, and several of us went out and made re, uh, home visits on those referrals. And so um, those home visits were were um, very, uh, how should I say, they were, um, the REACH program provided us a really good structure to make those home visits in the home. Otherwise, I think... Um, you know, a lot of times you feel like, well, I don't have anything to go by. But uh, with the REACH program, we were able to, to make those visits, and they have been very successful. So uh, we did that for a short time, and then um, in, uh, let's see, uh, beginning of this year in January, we, we decided as a department that we were going to use the REACH program as a competency for the public health nursing program. So um, we got work, got to work with Barbara, who's the uh, trainer with the REACH VA program, and by this month we will have at least, um, well, we'll have all of our staff trained and certified with, with one nurse who has, um, has yet to be certified. So... Um, We've, we've had great success with the program. Um, the people that have participated or the staff members that have participated in this program have, you know, they've had really good success. They've um, talked uh, good about the program, mainly that uh, I, I remember one nurse even saying, my goodness, we can use this for not only dementia patients, but also other patients as well. Ex excuse the, the overhead there. Um, so that's that's been our experience thus far, and um, our plans going forward is that um, we we haven't we've got all our people certified. Um, and so now we're going to go out and make home visits to the people that w that are not on on the list for uh, the veterans. So um, that's where we are at this point in time. So you started um, uh, with when we were doing this kind of as a pilot, um, and you only were looking at veterans. But it sounds like now you now that we're this is no longer a pilot, and it's available for all American Indian Alaska Native people, not just veterans, so it sounds like you're starting to reach out beyond the veterans who have to make that, that right? Yes, yes. In fact, um, it, it was just recently that the uh, MOU was signed between the, um, I believe it's 
um, IHS and the University of Tennessee to open this program up to the um, to the Native uh, communities on our reservation. So um, we haven't really gone out there yet, and we will soon. And and the thing that we were waiting for was the MOU to be signed. Okay. Was it hard to get your whole staff trained? Was that a big... I mean, I know you all are busy. You've got so much to do, so many people to see. Was it a, was it a hard... Was it a lot of time commitment or a difficult challenge? Um, no, not really. I think once we um, knew that our supervisor was um, was um, convinced that this was a, a good program, she went through the first uh, the first training that we did, and she felt it was a good program. So we decided to pick it up as a competency for our department. So. Um, so based on that, we were we we were just ready to go ahead with it, and it really wasn't difficult. I um, work with Barbara at the training center, and we were able to set it up, and and we did a um, three three hour training for this uh, for the staff, and and then she went ahead and uh, set up times to have people role play with her for the uh, certification process. So, no, it wasn't very difficult to do. That's great. Um, do you have any uh, stories uh, of the folks, those first folks that you saw? Um, any, any way, um, how did you know that it was helping them, that it was helping the people with dementia or the, the, uh, the caregiver? Well, with the uh, patient that was assigned to me, um, I went out at least three or four times and and the um the patient that I saw was an elderly with a um granddaughter that was uh um, taken care of him and she was at, initially i think she was um not not very open but as as we continued with the home visit she she opened up more and she was very receptive and towards the end of our visit she she told me that she was really happy that I was able to talk to her about, you know, the the, the things that um, she was, uh, or the issues that she was having with her grandfather, and uh, find ways to help her deal with, uh, with her grandfather, and also uh, for herself as well, because she was under a lot of stress, and we were able to, to do some of the stress management um, Techniques that are involved in the program, so she was very happy with the with with our intervention. That sounds great. It sounds like you had you really. Uh, sounds like you really uh, you caught both. You caught the, the 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 two aims of the Reach program, which is to help with caring for the caregiver, but also help with caring for the person with dementia, but also help with caring for the caregiver too. Um, do you remember any of the specific issues uh, around the person with dementia that you addressed? Do you recall any of that without, you know, obviously getting into too much detail because we want to maintain privacy, but are there, are there any stand out in your mind? I think um, uh, for the most part it was um, not necessarily the dementia patient, but it was the caregiver. She had a really difficult time trying to get her family involved in the care of their uh, their father, and, you know, she's a granddaughter, so uh, she just was under a lot of stress. And so I was able to come in and help her with, um, with stress management. And also the other thing I think that was really important was uh, for her to get connected to the resources that are available in our community. Um, and so I was able to help her, you know, just real simple things like getting getting a hold of uh, some documents that were lost through the uranium compensation program, and she was able to go and get those. And and just working through um, her PCO services as well. And um, so it's just it, we addressed a lot of issues with her. That, that makes perfect sense. And it sounds like having that kind of structured approach work that REACH gives you there. 
the idea that each time you go, you kind of know why you're going. Yes. Um, that, that that was helpful to you as a public health nurse? Oh, yes. Most definitely. Because uh, the program takes you through a, um, through a series of steps. And one of them being the, um, the first one, I think, was the uh, risk priority assessment identifying um, issues or problems that the, the patient and the caregiver were experiencing, and then going through that whole process of problem solving, and that's a big part of the caretaking, um, caretake, caretaker, um, is to be able to uh, problem solve with the caretaker, not necessarily doing all the work for her but or him, but, um, you know, just just leading them and, and telling them about resources and ways to address their problems in the home. And and um, and so, yes, most definitely it was uh, very helpful to have the, um, the uh, structured approach. How, how did you, did you find yourself make, now I know there's a, um, there's a, a, a handbook that you get as a PHN, a guidebook, and there's also a, um, a handbook that, um, that the caregiver gets. Did you find the handbook helpful or useful for you? Oh, most definitely. The interventionist uh, notebook is a uh, notebook that you can actually take into the home, and if you feel like, you know, initially feel like you're lost, you don't, you know, what shall I do next, you can always, uh, you know, refer to the handbook, the interventionist handbook, and, and see where you are and get back on track. And the other handbook um, that is uh, provided is also um, a great tool for the um, for the caretaker. It has a number of um, um, issues that the patient or the caregiver might be uh, having or experiencing, and it addresses um, all the different ways that you can help the patient or the caregiver. Um, so yes, most definitely, those are great tools. Thank you. Um, I wonder if any of our other panelists had questions for Norma. Norma, this is Tina. Um, so it, 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 it's a very remote area. I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about, um, you know, how what a great resource it is because of your remote. Talk a little bit about the referral um, system that you can set up. but. Um, I, I don't know that maybe folks might understand how beneficial this, this program is to individuals in the environment. Um, yes, we we are in in a uh, remote area. Um, actually, our service unit is um, is a fairly large service unit. There are areas where there are. Um, we call them urbanized areas, but they're little towns, and so they have, um, you know, they're more accessible to um, resources. But there are also some areas that are very, very remote, um, like the southern communities. We call them the southern communities, which is south of Shiprock, and we have several communities there. So um, we've been able to get out there and help our our people um, with um, with the dementia family or dementia patients. I think that's a great resource, especially for some of the caretakers, the, the isolation, you know, feeling like they're having to deal with the patient. Maybe, like, as you mentioned, having some support in problem solving. I think that was, that's a big plus as part of Yes, it is. Jennifer or uh, Barbara, did you have any questions for Norma? I do have one question, a uh, couple of questions. Norma, I know that um, it's a great resource for the staff, but were people concerned that it was going to be additional work or the workload? Um, how did the REACH program benefit them in terms of actually going and working with their caregivers? Uh, again, I think uh, the the response has been uh, positive. Um, as I mentioned before, we haven't had a chance to really open it up to the um, to the um, native communities, and we're working on a way to get that going. Um, 
as I mentioned, the MOU hasn't been in place very long, but the people that we've worked with, with the veterans, they, um, you know, we, we've been able to um, uh, work with them. And um, um, now I'll forget your question, Barbara. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no. I think it was just a matter of the perception of workload, more so than actually oh. doing Okay. Um, no. It, um, I think the biggest part for, for the staff, I think, is that um, the, 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 the biggest help, I should say, is that it is a, a structured approach. You have a way to talk with the people. You have a way to problem solve with them. You have a way of offering, you know, uh, stress management is a big thing with the caregivers. Because a lot of these folks don't have the um, extra family or the people to, to help them. So um, most definitely the structured approach, I think, is the biggest, the biggest help for us. One other question, Norma. Um, particularly with this last group that went through training, there was such a variety of people in different um, positions. So I was wondering if there was any feedback. I know we had... Um, PHNs and one, but we also had people who were support staff. Um, I know that we we had one person, I think, who was involved in maybe transportation. And so, what was the feedback in terms of people with different positions? Because it's not just for nurses. Um, so how I, did they? Did you get any feedback or any feeling? Um, in maybe staff meeting discussions on their experience going through training and certification. Yeah, yeah, uh, most definitely. Um, I I just want to mention that when we um, did took this up as a competency for our department, we wanted everyone in the department to be certified. And the reason for that is we want all the staff to know what the public health nurses are doing, and also for them to be able, especially our um, health techs, um, we, want it, we want them to go out on these visits as well. We want them to be certified and, because anybody can do this. Um, if, you're, if you're a caretaker, you, know, you can do this. You can teach other people. So it's, it doesn't necessarily require a nursing, you know, uh, an RN or whatever. It's a, you, anybody can do it. So, um, so the health techs have been um, uh, trained, and and they're they're going to be able to go out and make these visits. And also, our uh, uh, office staff have been trained as well. All of them are certified. They know, you know, when referrals come in, um, they'll be able to know how to um, delegate those referrals. And also, I had a um, conversation with one of our um, office um, secretaries at uh, another facility, which is a satellite of Shiprock, uh, northern Navajo. Um, that clinic is DZ Health Center. We have a um, secretary there, and she, w she called me one day and told me that she was able to, she got a call from a... Um, a patient or a family member and and talk to her about the difficulties they were having with their um, their grandparents and she was um, you know after taking this training she was able to tell them yes I think your your you know your family member might have dementia and needs to come in I'll do a referral for you and we'll get the nurse to go out there and see if they can if 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 um, the caretaker can be um, helped with this REACH program. So, yes, and, and, you know, in a lot of ways, our uh, support staff being trained has been a help to the public health nurses. Norma. Um, yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, I was curious because, um, you know, once the PHN or the health, whoever goes out and does the intervention, you know, it's always important to communicate back with the primary care provider. How did you guys handle that in regards to documentation? Um, we, we're looking right now, we're looking at uh, possibly developing a, um, a template for this, but we don't have a template yet. 
So we go ahead and uh, document our visit in the EHR with the uh, templates that are available, and um, just document like we 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 document on on our other patients. But we do address all the areas that we've covered, and we do have a plan. Um, you know, under the follow up um, in the template, we we know that um, note some of the things that we're going to do. Um, you know, the follow-up visits and so forth. So, yeah, it wasn't really difficult to do that. Uh, well, did I hear one more question for uh, Norma? Or if not, I'm just going to go to one of the other panelists. So, just mm -hmm. here. Yeah. There was a question that was asked, and I just wanted, if Norma wanted to answer that. And the question is, has it been difficult to explain what dementia and Alzheimer's disease is to the caregivers in the Native community? Um, I don't think so. I I haven't heard, you know, um, it was a, I think three of us nurses uh, worked with the, um, with the families and um, I, I, myself, I didn't have any difficulty explaining to the patient what, what it was. And, and generally the patient's um, caretakers do know. Um, what they don't know is understanding why they're, um, where their grandfather or grandmother or whomever in the family is doing what they're doing. And and sometimes they, they think that they're doing things intentionally to upset them or whatever. And so we come in and say, no, that's just part of the disease process. And so they're better able to understand that and, and to deal with the patients um, uh, more appropriately. And so, no, I, you know, the other two uh, nurses that went out to visit, make home visits, were na uh, not non-native speaking um, nurses. And I don't think, um, I didn't hear any, or, you know, I, I wasn't told of any problems regarding that, um, you know, patients not knowing or, you know, having difficulty explaining what uh, dementia was to them. That's that's a great story, uh, Norma, and I I know I know I probably speak for a lot of people on the on the call. And when you tell that story, my my heart gets a little bit big, war you know fills up because I know how much pain there is in the families when when a when an elder with dementia is behaving a certain way and they don't understand why, or they they think it's intentional, and they. And I think your ability to go out to be there for them and help help make sense of it. Uh, I wonder if there's any of the. Um, I, I guess I'd open it up at this point too, to anyone on the webinar, any of the audience who have specific questions uh, for Norma and uh, you know questions about their experience at the Brock at Northern Navajo. Um, yeah, so as far as the audience members... Again, how they can, they can speak. And then we, we also have questions for some of the other panelists. Sure. So um, if, if audience members have questions, um, if you're listening to the webinar using your phone, uh, you can press star 6 on your phone keypad to unmute your line and ask a question. Um, if you're listening through... Uh, your computer audio, you'll need to use the Q&A box to type in your question. You can also use the Q&A box if you're listening through your phone as well. Do we, do we have oh, hi. Do you hear me? Hello? Yeah. Hi, can you hear me? hear you. Okay, hi. Yeah. This is Loretta Haven. I'm Director of Public Health Nursing here at Phoenix and New Medical Center. And uh, my question is, we had typed it in the chat box, but I'm just wondering, like, um, how how are the visits initiated or who makes the referral? Are the referral, you know, where does it come from? Is it from the primary care, the VA? And our other question is, um, you know, here in the urban setting, I'm not sure, um, you know, how that, how that, if that's being, you know, looked at or, you know, I'm looking more at the outer um, communities, which would would entail using the CHRs. So what, I'm just wondering, you know, and then I guess it would help to see what the program is about and what it looks like if you guys are going to show that later. 
We'll, we'll do that, Loretta. Thank you. Um, Norma, do you want to talk a little bit about how you anticipate identifying um, families, people with Alzheimer's or their families to visit? Um, yes. Um, initially, uh, when we first started working with REACH VA, when it was REACH uh, veterans, um, Diane and another nurse uh, were able to work with the um, the hospital. Um, I can't remember what they're called, but the people that help with getting names of uh, people with dementia. They went through uh, a list of um, ICD-9 codes and anything pertaining to dementia or Alzheimer's with um, any, any of those patients. So we got that list first. And so then she went ahead and picked out the VA client. And then uh, because it was a pilot program, we went ahead and just farmed those out to the people that were covering those areas that had those patients in their communities. And we made those visits. Um, and we did have several. And um, But after that, and after we got uh, certified to do the REACH, uh, well, we were all certified to do REACH VA, but now we're going to switch to REACH into Indian country. And at this point, we're, we and, and also want to mention that we did talk with the uh, primary care providers, the physicians, um, and told them about the program. We introduced the program to them and asked them to send us um, referrals or consults on those patients that. Um, uh, caretakers that were having problems with their dementia patients. So we did, we have been receiving uh, consults through the system like that. And I think that's probably the way we're going to start um, working with primary care providers is to identify those patients uh, and caretakers that need help. And um, and so that's, at this point, that's what we're, we're looking at doing. And also, um, uh, Diane and and her counterpart did a um, when they did the the search for the dementia patients, we got a, a just all of the the dementia patients in our service unit, um, in our service unit. So what what I was thinking was um, getting several of those um, uh, patients in each of our areas in each of our communities and assigning them to public health nurses, and maybe they could do one or two and follow those through um, with the training that they got, you know, follow through with those visits um, using their notebooks and their interventionist notebooks as a guide and um, and doing that for... And, and following those um, patients, you know, and keeping track to make sure that all of the things that need to happen are happening. Mm -hmm. And then... You know, after after that, because we, we're using this as a competency for our department, so we want to be able to say, yes, as a result of this training, this is what the outcome has been at the end of the year. That's great. Thank you, Norma. And and I think Tina, Tina Ta had some comments as well. Loretta, to, to your, your question. Hi, Loretta. Um, I wanted to share with the group as well that, um, Loretta, you asked, you know, how the referrals were generated. Um, in um, Indian Health Services, we have our, our, um, our PMS system, our database that we're, you know, we have easy access to gather data. And so we were able to query the system with some ICD-9 codes that were specific to dementia. And we did share those ICD-9 codes with um, Shiprock and encourage them to do data searches at their end to identify those patients with that particular diagnosis and then have those um, patients kind of as their target population so that they could go out and um, uh, provide the service to those patients. And initially, we also had to look at those VA patients. So again, looking at that particular um, characteristic and doing the data searches really helped us target in on that population. Moving forward, though, we're hoping that um, once um, we have more PHNs trained, we can, again, um, offer more structure in regards to suggest, suggesting certain ICD-9 codes or um, procedure codes or V codes for both the patient with dementia and the caretakers. So we're hoping to, um, you know, provide additional um, um, guidance in regards to how we can follow this intervention. 
um, and how the referrals can um, be targeted to the PHNs or, or other folks that can provide this service in the future. Christina, I remember that you, uh, when, when we first started talking about this, of course, the nursing program at IHS has been really uh, central to development of this opportunity, the, the REACH program for us. And uh, you looked at the data nationally, didn't you, to see, because, see how much of an issue this was, dementia, in our, in our community. What did you find? I wish we had the slide to share. Um, the nice thing about um, our, our system is that we've got a robust system that collects data. So we were able to get a really good picture across like, at what we call a national picture with the 12 areas in IHS. And we were able to share this information with the various nurse consultants just to show that the, there was a level of need and that these patients are um, being seen in our facility. Um, I don't have the actual numbers for each of the areas, but the fact is that we were able to collect that information. And moving forward, we can continue to share this information. Um, as an example, we were able to give um, this particular graph that we developed to Shiprock that they could kind of entice their uh, PHNs and their providers to see that there is a need there, and this is very appropriate for public health nurses or um, anyone else that's receiving the training there to offer this valuable service to the community. Thank you. Um, I, know, uh, I know I was impressed when I looked at that data that, um, that in every area, in every community that reported, we have people with have families struggling to take care of them. So it made it pretty obvious that this was, this was a service that we want to be able to provide to the families of our community. I also I wanted to observe and, and think a little bit about as a as for me as a primary care doc, I seeing a family uh, with a uh, seeing a, an elder with dementia and their family. I look forward to the time when I can say, well, when I can review the talk about what's going on, but also say, and I want to make a referral to our CHNs or maybe in some programs the CHRs will be involved. And also in some communities, the, um, the Native American Caregiver Support Programs at the Senior Center are also training in the VA. So I want to be able to say to this family, you know, I'll help you manage, I'll help you with this, with, uh, care with this person with dementia, but really what I want you to do, I'm going to make a referral to this person, this PHN or this caregiver support person who's going to come into your home and, and help you over time be a resource to, as you um, as you all uh, address address these issues. Um, to me, as a, a doc, that'll be really a wonderful thing. Um, I wonder, uh, Katie, do we have other questions in the chat yet? Uh, we do have one. It is, um, how do you address the patients who do not have a caregiver? Ah, uh, so let's, that's a great question, and that's a great question to ask uh, um, of our REACH trainers, and Gen uh, Jennifer uh, Barndale Adams and Barbara Higgins, who are running the REACH training program, and I, I was going to turn to you all next anyway and, and ask you to tell us a little more about the training and the certification and how, um, how programs, how people can get, get, get access to that training and certification. Um, but maybe before you do that, you can address the, the um, what, in your experience, uh, what happens when you've had a referral from someone who doesn't have a caregiver. Okay. Our intervention is based on working with family caregivers. Um, whenever someone has called us at the VA and not had a, had a caregiver, we've been able to kind of look and see if they have anyone that's helping them. Um, we say it's family, but we can also train if they have a neighbor that's um, providing any kind of services to help them understand more about what's going on. I would just say one thing I'd add to that is, um, in my experience, often, especially early when there's a diagnosis of, of, of Alzheimer's or dementia, um, families may not yet have mobilized uh, 
stay around support of that person with dementia. Sometimes it happens, sometimes there's a health crisis, and that's when you discover or you recognize that there's dementia. So I think that the REACH intervention is actually can help trigger families to come together as well um, to, to think about how to provide support to an individual with dementia. So I could see that, um, I could see it functioning that way as well. And this is Tina. I think um, having the THN involved, um, generally they're jack of all trades and um, very, um, 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 they've had a history of making referrals to community resources. Um, and in, in the case where there may not be a caretaker, um, I we see the THN sending referral to social services or um, and maybe setting up a family meeting for some discussion in regards to, you know, what are the patient's needs and how are those needs going to be met. But that referral source is a, is, is a component that the PHN could also, you know, complement the service with as well. This is Jennifer. One of the things that we find uh, more often than people realize is that when we find a patient with dementia and we start talking to the caretaker, often the caretaker has... Um, some form of memory problems, and you have to, you know, try to find a family member to talk to about, you know, this problem. So that's something that y'all should, you know, know about because they kind of threw us for a loop the first few times that we realized that the that we're teaching about our intervention and the caretaker is not quite understanding what's going on. And the more we talk, the more we're realizing that it's that she's just not remembering what we're, we've been talking about. So That, that makes a lot of sense. I, I, I think it, it also points out that um, when we have services to provide to people, they will come to us more with the problem. So um, when we have caregiver support to provide, I think we'll see much more of this. So uncover more dementia that's there in the community that the families are struggling with. I so you had a question. Actually, offer. Um, Jennifer and Barbara, do you want to speak a little bit about the training and certification process, and or about the program? And, and also, we've been talking a lot about public health nurses because Norma's a public health nurse, and her program is is operating through PHN. But we know too that um, HRs. Uh, can be trained, that um, uh, Title VI uh, caregiver support staff can be trained, are, are being trained. Um, I know we have at least one urban program on the call and that staff at urban programs um, will likely find this intervention really helpful and they may or may not have a public health nurse at the urban program, but they may have staff who are outreach staff. So if you can speak a little bit more broadly about training and certifications and how this works. I'm going to let Barbara first. There was a question that came in and want to know more about the components of the intervention. So I'm going to let her kind of tell everybody more about what we teach and how the sessions run and then talk about training and certification. Okay. Um, so everybody, <clears throat> very simply, the program is, Norma had mentioned uh, the structure of the program. And the program is structured in that we have an outline format for each session, which makes it very easy for the intervention is we communicate with the caregiver. We have scripts in our material to guide the, the intervention. But it is also targeted in that we conduct a risk assessment, which is our risk priority inventory, which is a battery of questions that aimed at identifying the risk areas for that particular caregiver. The actual intervention is conducted over four active, four phases, or core sessions, and that we want every caregiver who's enrolled in the program to have these four sessions. In those sessions, they will learn problem-solving skills, positive thinking and risk management, and stress reduction skills. If the interventionist and the caregiver feel that that caregiver could benefit from additional sessions, we do have the option to provide those additional sessions as needed. The core sessions are one hour in length and generally completed within a two to four month period. That's just sort of a common time frame. Everything really is customized to the needs of the caregiver. The sessions can be conducted face-to-face, -face, 
we have done pilot studies um, with these sessions conducted over the telephone, so we know that that's also effective, or if there are telehealth equipment that's available. A little bit about the training and the certification. If we can, it might be okay. So you can see um, the ongoing, the upcoming training sessions that are available, and the contact information. If you're interested in signing up for training and certification, just contact me, send me an email, or call me, and I will send you additional information about the program. Um, I will also attach a characteristic form, which is our registration form. I'd like you to complete that and then send that back to me, uh, indicating which session you'd like to attend. If none of the times that are scheduled on the flyer are convenient, we are open to doing customized training. Uh, we just did that for uh, a group last Friday. Um, Scheduled training sessions didn't meet with their work duties, and so we are open and available to uh, arrange appointments as needed. The training is conducted online and is three hours in length. We use Adobe Connect conferencing system, and so what I will normally do is after I've received the registration form, I will send you a link and also a test link to make sure that uh, you have computer uh, capabilities. And um, then we will conduct the training session. After you completed the training session, I ask the individual if they are willing to certify or go through the certification, complete the certification process. At that point, we will send you your training materials. Once we have a commitment to actually completing certification and enrolling caregivers, we will send out the interventionist notebook, the caregiver notebook, and our certification process is very simple. Generally, I work one-on-one -on -one with each person who's going through certification. Uh, we do a mock role play. We will play two of the key components of the intervention, which is the problem solving um, and the stress reduction. Uh, we do a mood management, which is called mood management, we do the um, mood management component of our program. After you've completed the role play, you are certified and then able to enroll caregivers. This is Jennifer, and I'm a mind reader. I can guess that all of you are asking how much does this program cost. Excellent. Um, we have been funded by the RX Foundation for the next uh, couple of years to be able to provide this free of cost. Uh, what we're trying to look at is whether or not the REACH program, as we have it now, is a good fit into Indian country. So they've been nice enough to fund us. So um, the materials are free, the training. The training is free at this time. That's, that's great. Thank you, Jennifer. I was just going to ask you that question. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and by materials, it means, too, that um, the REACH and the, the, you have uh, interventionist handbooks and uh, caregiver handbooks for everybody that the programs might serve, right? So, so if, I'm, yes. um, if I'm working out at, up at Micmac in um, Presque Isle, Maine, and I have five, um, I get, and, and, and we get trained up there. We have five persons with dementia that we're going to start to reach out to their family. You'll send us five sets of, uh, of uh, caregiver notebooks, right? Yes, we'll send, we send a caregiver notebook for every person that's enrolled in the program. So every caregiver that enrolls will receive a caregiver notebook for them to keep for the rest of their caregiving career. For this, we do, we will be checking in with uh, the people that are trained and certified just to see how the intervention is going and if they have any feedback on ways that it would need to be improved for Indian country. So there is a little cost. We, we will be checking back with you and just asking some questions just to make sure that things are going okay to help us to 
be ready to roll it out. To yes, I had a question. And, and that's also... Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead with the question. Yes. Uh, Mary Weston calling from Intertribal Council of Arizona in Phoenix. And uh, hi to Barbara and Dr. Fink. Uh, Barbara, we, we had talked at the beginning of the program. Uh, sounds like you're ready uh, for us now, so I'm excited to hear that. And I just wanted to make sure that um, after the training, the individuals train, this would be caregiver coordinators that would be working with the Family Caregiver Support Program. Um, they would be able to uh, refer and help anyone. If they would not, it would, it, not just someone who's federally connected, right? That's right. At this stage, at this point, so in the beginning, we were just connect, just piloting it with veterans because the VA was good enough to give us resources, help us do that, to test it out. But now that um, the REACH uh, Training Center has the funding from RX Foundation, that's allowed that, that, that means they, we can provide these services to, to every, uh, every beneficiary, every American Indian, Alaska Native person, family, person with dementia and their family. So it's, uh, it's not limited in any way. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, other questions uh, from folks on the webinar? We do have uh, another question in the Q&A box here. I can go ahead and read that off. Uh, does the family of the patient with Alzheimer's have any type of counseling to help them understand what's going on? Let's see who wants to take that. I mean, uh, Jennifer or uh, Barbara, do you want to take that? I, I think I think Norma spoken to that a bit from from her perspective. So do you all? Yeah, when uh, we get that often, um, when there's one person, but there may be multiple caregivers, we really allow the integration to decide how they want to address that. They can either choose to work one on one with an identified intervent I mean identified caregiver and because those caregiver issues may be different. Each family member may have a a different problem or concern. And remember the third thing with reach is that we do target the issues of that specific caregiver. Another option they can do is they can work with multiple caregivers within the family or the family can sit in. They can, you know, sit in on the sessions if the caregiver is comfortable with that. They can sit in on the sessions, but knowing that the concerns of the targeted part of the intervention will be geared towards what the concerns are for that, that particular caregiver. Thank you. Are there other questions? Anybody else with questions for, for any of the panelists? And again, you can press a star six to unmute your line if you're listening through your phone. So we are closing in on the hour, so still, still have a couple of minutes. But um, uh, if you don't have questions in the next minute or two, we'll, we'll close. And I, I did, again, want to emphasize a couple of things about this. One is that um, we have about two years of support from the RX Foundation. So this is a training opportunity that's fully funded um, and uh, an ability to, to give us the ability to deliver a service we've never really been able to provide. And so we should take advantage of it. <laughs> Just don't wait. Jump now. And I, I'm anticipating already we're seeing that um, right now we're just getting started, so there's lots of training slots. But I'm anticipating as time goes on, the training slots will start to get kind of taken up. So if you're, if you're thinking about it, um, Please give Barbara and, uh, a, call, a call or an email to get listed. The other two points I wanted to make again are, one is that the, um, that the uh, uh, intervention is for, for all folks, not just limited to, be, to veterans. It's for any, uh, any individual with Alzheimer's or dementia and their caregivers. Um, and, and the second point is that, that um, 
Reach is designed really for a variety of people to serve as the, as the interventionist, to serve in support of the caregivers. So we're really looking intensively with the immediate health at health nurses and CHRs because those are in our system, those are most of the people who get out to the homes already. Um, within the Title VI or the, uh, the senior center, the senior center programs, they're really focusing on their caregiver support staff because those are the people who are, who are providing support to caregivers already. But, um, but in an urban program or in other programs, there may be other staff who you want to have trained. And I know um, Barbara and Jennifer have been very open to training folks uh, in, this, in this model, um, and they don't have to fit into one of those categories. And I think we learned from Norma that, um, that in their, at Chiprock, they train their entire staff in the model um, so that their entire staff understands what caregiver support looks like and what their capabilities are to deliver that support. And I think that's really a creative and, and smart approach. I, I, they took it out. They, I'm really excited about it. So, so while we really want to focus on certifying people who are going to go uh, provide that caregiver support, by all means, uh, I think we're, we're able to invite others to the training so that they can learn about, um, learn about uh, REACH. And and and, uh, and support for caregivers. Maybe I'll do one last call. Do you? Uh, are there any other questions um, online, or does anybody else have questions in the webinar audience? No. Um, to any of the panelists, any last words? This is Tina, and if there's any PHN programs out there that are interested in maybe some coordinated training, please send me an email. Um, I will be working through the nurse consultants for the 12 areas to send out information and the training flyer. Um, so that, um, but if there's interest in maybe setting up area training for the public health nurse programs, that might even be better. So let me know, and um, I'll be contacting the PHN programs in the next couple of weeks as well. Thank you, Tina. Um, Norma, any last words? Um, no, it's just that um, I'm, I'm really happy that we were able to do this, and now we have another tool in our in our back bag of public health nursing. And, and thank you, and we are so grateful to you uh, uh, and and uh, your and 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 Northern Navajo Medical Center for sort of showing us the way forward on this. Thank you. Um, uh, Jennifer or or uh, or, uh, or Barbara, any last words? I am standing by my computer and my phone, waiting. Uh, those will be our last <laughs> words. Thank you all for joining us. Thanks to all the panelists. Thank you, Kaufman. All right. Thank you so much, Bruce, and thank you to the presenters and to the audience for joining us today.